your goal of detachment from the world, attachment to God, will not be just placed in your lap. It's not going to happen automatically. You will have to work towards it. But that is the principle everywhere in the world. Wherever you want success, you have to go towards it through the law of incremental growth. One step at a time, you have to move forward. There are no shortcuts. If you say somebody is there, it's only because that person put the effort required to reach there. In other words, there are no free lunches. So whatever our goal, we have to toil, strive and endeavor to it. If you say, well, you know, Swamiji, the goal is achieved by grace. Why doesn't the Guru grace me? Well, the goal is achieved by grace, but that grace has a rule. The rule is, it's a divine rule. We will only receive the grace to the extent of our surrender. And now when there's a rule in place, we have to decide, how much grace do I want? This much. All right, surrender this much. No, I want this much grace. Surrender so much. No, I want so much of grace. Then surrender so much. I want so much grace, but I will surrender this much. That will not work. The law is irrevocable. In other words, God's grace is in our hands. It is now up to us how much surrender we do. So the spiritual realm is very simple. In the material realm, you have to think, oh, I need to apply makhan to my boss, butter up my boss so that he gives me a good report and the other person is playing politics and I don't know of his politics and that is why I'm in tension. You see, the material realm is very complex. There are people who are very good in their work, but they don't know the office politics and they keep losing out. And there are others who are street smart. They know all the external things. But in the spiritual realm, you just don't need to bother. The only thing that is required for grace, you improve your own insight. You improve the quality of your surrender, the quality of your devotion, and grace from that side is guaranteed. That gives us faith. That gives us hope. That in the spiritual field, I don't need to learn tikram, cunningness, 400 BC, 420. I only need to learn how to improve my devotion and how to improve the quality of my surrender. So when we keep this law in mind, after that, there is complete peace. Whenever we are not receiving some grace, that means there's a shortage in our surrender. So in the world, you would have looked outside. Oh, you know, this person played a trick with me, that person did this with me, this person did that. But in the spiritual realm, it's all between you and God. If we did not receive a grace, then we should look inside and see what is it that I could have improved in my devotion and that grace would have come. But you know, the grace was bestowed on this person, so there was a shortage now. Not really. In bhakti, grace is infinite. Devotion is infinite. 
Sevas are infinite. So, it's not that God runs out of grace or the Guru runs out of grace. The only shortage is of our own devotion and our own surrender. The day we understand this principle, our whole effort is to improve our own sadhana. Our whole effort is to enhance the quality of our own devotion. So this must always be kept in mind. Now, very often, you know, our intellect deceives us. So intellect thinks against this. Intellect says, you know, why is the Guru not gracing me? Why is Sri Krishna not bestowing his grace? Guruji, it seems you have forgotten to grace me, so I've come to remind you. The Kripaluji Maharaj says, grace will not happen by itself. And there are certain tushtis that we need to carefully watch out for. What is tushti? Tushti means santushti. To become satisfied in your situation. To be satisfied in your situation is an ornament in the material realm. And it's the enemy of sadhana in the spiritual realm. Santosha strishu kartavya swadare bhojane dhane. In three things, be completely satisfied. Contentment is an ornament. In which three things, swadare, bhojane and dhane. In your spouse, in your wealth, in the food that you eat. Trishu naivacha kartavya swadhyaye japadanayo. In three things, never be contented. In your study of the scriptures, in procuring the knowledge, in your chanting of the names of God, in the seva that you perform, always cultivate this sentiment, I have not done anything as yet. I need to do so much more. So the two different realms have got two different formulae which we keep in mind while handling them. In the material realm, if we are discontented, we will keep running, running, running. And in the spiritual realm, if we are contented, we will stop running. Oh, everything is all right, I am fine. Then the speed of our sadhana will either reduce or stop completely. That is why this tushti or contentment in the spiritual realm is an enemy of the sadhana. So some of these tushtis, they sneak into our intellect cunningly. So one of them is called Ishwar tushti. The second is called Bhagya tushti. The third is called Kal Tushti. The fourth is called Sharanavaran Tushti. What is Ishwar Tushti? To think, when God graces me, then everything will happen. So if he is not gracing me, the mistake is from his side. Why is it Guruji, why is it God, you are not gracing me? You grace so and so, so and so, so and so. Now what is happening out here? For surrender to God, we are assuming God to be the cause. You need to grace, then I will surrender. We are putting the horse before the cart. The principle has to be understood. God and Guru are samadarshi. Samadarshi means equal towards everyone. 
So this is called the Jal Vrishti Nyay. The rain falls equally on the ground everywhere. The kind of vessel you have, that is the consequence which happens from the rain. Some of the rain water fell on the desert sand and it flowed off without any consequence. Some of the rain water fell on the fertile land and resulted in wonderful vegetation. Some rain water fell in the drain, in the gutter, it mixed with the sewage and flowed off as sewage water. Some drops, they fell into the river Ganga. They became Surasari Bhagirathi Ganga. Some drop fell into that oyster, the seep. In the Swati Nakshatra. And it transformed into a pearl. Another fell in the cacti and transformed into a thorny bush. Now somebody says that this is gross injustice of the rain. Here it created a thorny bush. There it created a rose flower. There it became the Ganga. Here it became a pearl. How unfair. So there is no unfairness there. The rain is falling equally everywhere. It all depends on the vessel, the place where it falls. Similarly, God and Guru have no partiality in their grace. Their grace is equitable because they are bound by laws. Ye yatha maam prapadyante tanstathai vabhajam myaham. Shri Krishna says in the Gita, As you surrender to me, I shall reciprocate accordingly. Ek pratigya krishne rache puro haiche ye haiche bhaje krishno tar bhaje taiche. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Krishna's Promises, as you love me, I will love you accordingly. Kripaluji Maharaj writes, Jaiso jeeva kare pyaar, Taiso kare pyaar yaar, Man tero sancho yaar, Brajraj kumar. Jaiso jeeva kare pyaar, taiso kare pyaar yaar. So if we want more grace, we engage in more surrender. Simple formula. But instead, if we start blaming God, you know, you have not graced me, then we have misunderstood the theoretical knowledge. Why are you not surrendering? I am waiting for grace. So because now we are waiting for grace to surrender, we will reduce the speed of our efforts. And instead, if we decide, it is all in my hands. If I want more grace, I need to surrender to the utmost of my ability. That will bring about speed speed in our own efforts. So that's the first tushti, Ishwar tushti. We need to carefully weed it out from the maze of our intellect. And the second tushti is Bhagya tushti. This Bhagya tushti is also very deceiving. You know, this person is doing so well. Are uske bhagya me likha hoga. Must have been in his destiny. We say like this and satisfy ourselves. 
So, you know, my destiny is not good. That is why I'm like that. But there was a person a couple of decades ago called K. Anders Ericsson. He did a study of elite performance. And he wrote a paper which became world famous later on. He said the elite performers, somebody who is an expert Kathak artist or a Bharatnatyam artist or a singer, how did they reach there? Were they just born with it? And he discovered it was not the case. They had put in 10,000 hours of practice by the time they reached the age of 20. So that 10,000 hours of practice was the cause behind their world-class performance. The same applies to the spiritual path as well. If you see, oh, somebody is sailing so high, and I'm not there. That person has put in a whole lot of practice. No, but he's only come to the satsang two years ago. It means he had a huge bank balance from the past. He was carrying forward the bank balance which he had accumulated in past life. Now, if we find my own bank balance is less, then what should we do? Earn at a faster rate? In other words, don't take the crutch of destiny to become lazy. If we do, then we will get satisfied in our situation. Why are you progressing so slowly? Are my destiny is bad. What will be the consequence? We will become satisfied. And when we become satisfied, our effort will slow down. So instead of that, keep this knowledge. I am the maker of my destiny. No excuses. I am here today. But I am shooting for the moon. I want to go there. So it will not be a single one long leap. I will have to practice day in and day out, day in and day out. It is through such practice, Kripaluji Maharaj was saying, that somebody becomes a billionaire. It is through such practice that somebody becomes a learned scholar. Kshanasa, kshanaso vidya. Kanasa, kanaso dhanam. You see, somebody is a scholar today. That knowledge did not fall in his lap. He earned it using every little moment. You see a billionaire today. It happened by saving one, one dollar. There's a music maestro called Ravi Shankar. Ravi Shankar was asked, by the correspondence that you have been giving public performances now for 50 years. So Ravi Shankarji, do you still need to practice? He said, you know, if I don't practice for one day, I know the flow is not there. I can make out. If I don't practice for two days, the critics, they are able to make out this performance was not to Ravi Shankar's level. If I don't practice for three days, the common audience is also able to note the difference. So, anabhyasena visham vidya. You may have wonderful knowledge, but if you don't practice it, it will start dwindling and evaporate. That is why abhyas, abhyas, abhyas. Practice, practice, practice. You want to go quickly to the goal? Increase the speed of your practice.
You say, you know, I want to develop this virtue, control of the tongue or whatever. Practice more, more, more. In other words, it is always effort that will lead to the results. There are no shortcuts. There are no free lunches. So, bhagya tushti, be wary of it. The third is kala tushti. What is kala tushti? Kala tushti is waiting for the right time. Do bhakti. You know, when the time comes, it will happen automatically. Will the time come and make you do bhakti? Of course not. It is not that time will come and make us do bhakti. Time is passing away. Every moment that goes by is gone forever. It will never come back. Hence, Chanakya Pandit had said, Sahane stanmaha chidram samohaha savibramaha yan muhurtam shanam vapi vasudevam chadna chintayet. The biggest loss in your life, the biggest calamity, the biggest tragedy. The biggest reversal is what? That one moment, yan muhutam, which you did not use in the appropriate manner, in a beneficial, uplifting, positive manner. So, time is an invaluable resource. And time must be very carefully spent. The people who succeed in life are those who know the value of time. People ask me, Swamiji, you know when I give the public speech, Swamiji, can I have your email? I say, you know, if I give email means I have to give you time. First, I have to decide is it worth it. You start coming to our regular a congregational satsang and then I'll give you the email but not otherwise. Our people will, you know, in India and all, the moment they see a Baba, they, oh, Swamiji, I have got a question on the railway station and everything. So why spend 15 minutes with this guy instead? Do contemplation for 15 minutes. So time is an invaluable resource. You must realize that you can purchase so many things in life, but you can't purchase time. It is only passing by. The only option you have is how will you invest your time. And that will make all the difference. Some people, they waste their time. Some people utilize it. And those who are effective make the best use of their time. That's what makes all the difference. So, don't wait that the time will come and it will make me do bhakti automatically. The kala tushti also needs to be rejected. And the fourth is sharan avaran tushti. Sharan avaran tushti is what? It is a hypocrisy that has crept in unknowingly. So we are fooling ourselves. Sharanavaran Tushti means to say, I am surrendered, nothing is mine in the world. And having said that, become contented. In other words, to talk of Sharanagati with the mouth, but not do it actually. And having said it, become contented. Are everything of mine belongs to the Guru. Now the statement is very right. It is a statement of Poon Sharanagati, complete surrender. But the person does not actually believe it from inside, does not implement it from inside. And having said it, he is content. Sab to Bhagawan ka hai.
like let us say you call the baba ji to your home now you know sadhus and babas they are of free mind no bonds so he asked are bhai this such a big house whom does it belong to guru ji it is all yours the statement is perfect right from his mouth he saying the right things it is all yours acha and that car outside whose is that guru ji it is all yours and this fridge and this tv and all guru ji nothing in this house is mine everything belongs to you so guru ji said well you know i did not know there's so much of my property lying out here <laughs> you get that you all put it all in there and send it to my ashram now the person thinks oh my my what kind of a guru is he guru ji what kind of a sadhu are you before this i told to 20 sadhus it is all yours nobody said send it to my ashram <laughs> have you taken sanyas recently so people they give statements of poon sharanagati but don't do it from inside and having said it they become contented oh i am totally surrendered because i have said shri krishna sharanam mama and i have put a sticker in my shop shri krishna sharanam mama so when the yam doots come i'll show them the sticker here <laughs> this is sharan avaran tushti So all these kinds of tushtis need to be lifted and thrown away. In the Ramayan, Uttar Kand, you know, the Uttar Kand has got the gyan in it. So Tulsi Das Ji writes, Nara Tanu Bhava. वारिधिक मेरो सन्मुख मरुत अनुग्रह तेरो बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ गॉड वी गॉट द ह्यूमन फॉर्म बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ गॉड वी गॉट द नॉलेज एंड द सत्संग बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ गॉड वी गॉट अ गुरु एज वेल नाउ द होल सिचुएशन इज फेवरेबल everything is in place we've got the guru we've got knowledge we got the human form jo na tarai bhav sagar nar samaj as pavai so krit nindak mand mati atma han gati jai yet if somebody is not striving having got all these graces atam han gati jai tulsi das ji says he is killing his own soul this is the real atmahatya you know when people do atmahatya they kill the body but the real atmahatya is the killing of the soul atmahatya tulsi das ji says my my all the graces you have squandered them all I got so many graces, and yet I wasted them all. And why? So he says in this next verse. So paratra dukh pavai, sir dhuni dhuni pachita hai kalahi. Blaming time when time comes, it will happen. Karma hi, blaming destiny. If destiny wants, it will happen. Ishvara, putting the blame on God's grace. When He graces, it will all happen. Mithya dosha lagai. Wrongly putting the blame or the responsibility on all these things. Mithya dosha lagai. In other words, what we were supposed to do. we did not do and we leveled the responsibility and the fault on other things so why does this happen the intellect has got wrong knowledge in it 
Hence, with this tattva gyan, we need to correct the intellect. And then, inspire ourselves to put the best foot forward, to put in our best efforts. So hence, Kripaluji Maharaj is saying, Hari Anurag, attachment to God. Virag Jag, detachment from the world. Aapuhi aap nahoi. It is not going to happen automatically. Manate bhajan kiye bina bhakti na pave koi. Without doing sadhana, nobody will reach the goal. Now it's up to you how quickly you want to do it. You know, I wish to attain God in next life. All right, then slow down. No, right now I, my goals are different. I'll attain him after 10 lives. All right, that's up to you. In other words, the speed is all in your hands. There is one thing that God has given to us all. The freedom to choose. The free will. That is the one thing the soul has got. Everything else, this body is made by God, the air, the strength that we have. But the one thing we have is the free will to choose. So what choices you make, that is where you will find yourself. You made a set of choices. And that is why you are sitting doing sadhana on a Monday morning. Now that was the result of some choices, right? Now if you had made different choices, you would have found yourself in a different place. So you made some right choices. That's why you reached to such a level. But it's not enough. It's not enough. Because God needs you to correct the insight. You got to go deeper. Should I think this or should I think this? You are sitting in the kirtan. Should I think about my home and what will be happening there? Or should I think about God? So the choices are in our hands. And what is sharanagati? What is surrender? At every moment to choose God. At every moment to choose His happiness. Surrender is a moment to moment process. Every moment you need to surrender.